thing that we talked about that was very important is being able to work with a group of people. And something that really struck me is having a person that you wouldn't be a friend with, but someone that you can communicate effectively with and share ideas and work collabor collaboratively. So when working with groups, you don't, one wouldn't have to have that mindset in their mind, like, I have to get along with this person all the time. We have to be friends. We're working together to create some sort of change and learn to deal with it and communicate effectively. We talked about um, trying to facilitate discussion about um, her discussions that people might not, not, might not necessarily want to have and how to make that happen. One method was uh, you know, identifying with both sides, with like the aggressor and the victim in these situations. And also, um, something that I found interesting got brought up was the uh, um, creating uh, an example of the relationship to show as like an example, as a, as a way of breaking it down without blaming people, without blaming the people you're working with. That's a new under the sun, the father, the Holy Ghost, um, the sun. But there's plenty of old things to talk about. So this here, Yik Yak, got 12 gauge kickback. And they shoot, they are shooting, but it doesn't make us look because we used to it. Rap made the hood real in our mind. Crack rock made the universal outside. Now Chris Rock, we cursed it, so we follow suit. Now we might start out as playing pookie, but we run with Bernie Mac to be the black heads of state. Well dressed for the job we want because life is the job we got. So we three piece poems and follow suit. Me too, she said. Well adjust for me, baby. Of guns and roses, she chose the latter. But you could throw petals at my feet, put the metal at my feet. That metal was iron, that iron is the irony of being better at things when we are inexperienced and navigated by instincts. But it's a Trish and Jay's dream, some wide eye possibility. We devolve emotions to find the things impossible as opposed to being intuitive and unstoppable. Um, my chapter is uh, hip hop activism, hip hop, and then subliminal hip hop. And um, this, that's my creative intelligence, my point of entry into the world. I grew up in New York, and it, for me, hip hop is the way for street New Yorkers to communicate with each other. So it's a subcultural language. To, to develop political power in that community, you have to have skills, and you use your content and message to illustrate your skills, which and hopefully informs your character and your citizenry. So in other words, the type of things I rhyme about, whether it's gangsterism or activism, whatever the case may be, hopefully speaks to the type of person I am. Actually, I earn political power by my voice, skill level, and that gives me power, so that leads to leadership and responsibility. As an individual and an artist, I raise questions and, answer, and ask them, and then also <clears throat> answer them in the sense of, if I'm an artist, I have responsibility for what I put out. So from an individual, the ideas, process, and form resonates with X amount of people, whoever it does. So now they're looking at you saying, well, Omari, lead us. You said this wrong this way. Well, you painted the, the train this way, et cetera, et cetera. So now I have an audience, and I got all these people who are looking at me to do something. So what is it that I do? So I get on the radar of a French lady in Charleston, <laughs> and she has what we call rhizomes and alternate groups. And that's an offshoot of a group, you know, in a botanical sense. So I go to the rise room, present myself a certain way, perform, et cetera, et cetera. Then I get the hip hop scholarship with alternate rooms. I don't want to go because I hear it's a hippie kind of thing, hug, love fest. That's not, I'm an MC, I'm street, I'm, you know, I'm not that, you know what I'm saying? But the intention of the scholarship is to get somebody like me, somebody who's using their art in a particular way and it's affecting certain communities. So that's the intention of the scholarship. So I go, reluctantly, I go, you know, expenses are paid. And in real real talk, I wouldn't have gone if I didn't get the scholarship, right? But I was adamant about not going. But I went, and it was a lot of hugging. But, then, <laughs> but, but the content was so thick, like, it was, I'm a content guy, message guy. So that's that's what keeps me in the organization. So Roots is the intersection of art and activism. And I just did some offshoots. So I came in in 04 and there was a conflict and or transition in the organization. And just real talk so you know where I am, I don't like to call people 
color. I don't like to call Americans of European descent white. I don't like to call Americans of African descent black. Like, there's political reasons why we call those things, or we might choose to call ourselves those things. So I'm big about self-identification. So you call me a New Yorker, you call me a painter, you call me an MC, but I don't want to be black because I have quirks about that. That was, it was a transition, an intergenerational and kind of a racial transition in the organization. But it led to uh, the coloring of the organization. It also led to inclusive inclusiveness of, of lifestyles and, and now it's like a Latino presence in, in all kinds of caucuses that are, that are trying to integrate the organization the best we can so that we can really embody the South. So you go from the annual meeting and that's for a year, I became vice chairman of the executive committee, and I transferred over to the chairperson of RC. And then, um, to me, the, the the strength of the organization is the networking. So, if I'm a content guy, I name my crew is New Danger, and New means young, Danger means informed citizen, no change agent. So, if I'm exposed to this network of people and other artists and these causes and conferences, this informs my content. So, when I go back to the street or the hood, now, now my, the evolution of my content and message is, is far more developed than what it was before I encountered the organization. I and I, we don't have much in common. <laughs> I'm sorry, you are black, I'm white. He's young, I'm old. We don't have the same mother tongue, not the same background and everything. We have two things in common though. We are visual artists. And for that, we are a minority in roots. Minority always congrat got together, and we are both from South Carolina. And um, he said he doesn't like hugging, but when he came to my home the first time, he was the one taking me like that with a camera and taking photos. <laughs> <laughs> I said, who's this guy? I don't know from what. French. Anyway, anyway that, <laughs> that was part of uh, our work. But personally, I'm going to talk about how we do community work when we come from a ground, a background of visual artists that have been raised in a history where you are a genius if you can stay alone in your studio and push something. <laughs> so that's come for me from the 70s of feminism. No woman in history, not much black people in history. So we think in all that there was a need and the artists run of gallery movement. But when I came to Roots, and when we developed more projects, and the resources on social change principles that talked about shared power, and working with community people as an artist, the first thing that came to my mind is that how am I going to blur the line between artists, non-artists, and educators, and be all on the same level? coming from, again, a visual artist with a mind that was shaped to be individualistic. So the first thing that we did was, yeah, the Rhizome group and organize something. And we, the idea was to develop a tool that everybody could be part of it. To try to put two people who have never met, like you, let's say, hey, would you like to meet this person who told me when they would like to meet you? And we are going to see you. So you put together and we film. Obviously, as you can see, it's not professional filming. And that was the first one, it's the worst filming. But it explained that, and mostly everybody said yes. That was people who were for sure never going to meet together. And how were they going to have access to our work? So we needed to do a website, and all the conversations that the principal have been recorded are totally accessible for the net, for whoever you are in the world. Then, as a visual artist, you have other concerns when you look at that. Yes, you organize that. For me, in that case, is that if you open every conversation, you have hundreds of different English accents. So that's a picture of the world that was done through a collaborative tool for everybody. And it's true for everybody, not only in the States. And I tell that things again. I was in France a couple of weeks ago, and my younger sister, pretty conservative, she tells me, Gillen, you have an accent. <laughs> uh, so I said, yes, and you too. I said, no, in Paris we don't have an accent. So accent means negative. So I understood that actually that means positive, to have hundreds of English accents. 